there's a lot of important nuances when it comes to this Euler model that we derived in a, a previous uh, lesson. The, the general part of that was that your displacement function equal to A times sine times the square root of, of the critical load divided by EI times, times X. But gee, what was that PE? And we get this value here, right? That's what those values gave us the non-trivial uh, answers that ultimately boils down to a displaced shape when it buckles of, of some constant times the sine function n pi x over l. And n was equal to these integer values, one, two, three, four, et cetera, on up into infinity. Let's take a look at what happens for different uh, n values. For n equal to one, when we plot this, we'll have a times sine pi x over l. Now the A, that constant that sits out there, this all tells us that in the buckling mode, we don't know what the actual scale of the deflection is, right? When it buckles, pop, it goes, right? We're loading it up, loading it up, boom, pop, right? It's a displacement control thing, right? I decide by how I decide to choose to move my hands, what that scale or that amplitude is of that deformed shape. But notice it's all just the same shape. It's this half sine wave that's there. Right, and so n equal to one means that the sine wavelength, the repeating aspect of this, is over 2L rather than just L, and that's why you see the half sine wave. When n is equal to two in this argument, then we get this whole sine wave showing up over that length L. Now, in order to try to create that in my little flexible ruler there, what I have to do is put something at the midpoint to prevent it from going back and forth, right? So let me get a little brace there so I can get my hand in there and do that. And I'm gonna move it down so that this is about centered on that same line. And so, ooh, you know, if I don't have something there, look, I get the half sine wave. But if I come along and I brace it in the middle and squeeze, then you get this half, uh, whole sine wave going through. Well, half over this length, which is half the length. That's kind of an interesting thing too there. Now notice too, when I did that, you didn't get exactly the, the same direction every time. It just depends on the imperfections that are going on. And you can actually manipulate it a little bit too to make it do what you want. Um, but from a, just a natural standpoint here, you've got this whole sine wave. N equals to three is one and a half sine waves and so on and so forth for each one of these. Now, the other critical piece of this is note that not only does that n value change over the length of the member what the deformed shape looks like in terms of increments of half sine waves, but it also changes the magnitude of the load in a big way, not just a little way. Right? One to two is not twice as much, it is four times as much because there's an n squared. All else being equal, then P2 is four times the value of the first mode. The third mode being n cubed, being n equal to three, means it's nine times as much as the, the first mode. So if there's nothing to prevent these other modes from happening, well, it's gonna buckle at the lowest or the first possible value that it can. But if you have some sort of intermediate bracing point there, say at the midpoint, you're not gonna get this first one because it can't, it can't bounce up in and out, it'll do this one. If you have it at the, essentially the third points, then you're gonna get this, uh, one and a half sine wave kind of thing and so on and so forth as you go up. It takes more and more load to do that. That is a direct easy thing to, to experience. You you squeeze this thing that feels pretty light and you come along and put them right. Ooh, wow. Right. And you can even see it in that indentation of my finger at the end how much more indentation is there that sort of suggests the significantly increase in the, the force value to cause it to buckle. 